I remember um, Bill Sapphire once saying, he wants those two candidates in there. You know, he put his dukes up like, we want the Thrilla in Manila. This is the quadrennial exercise that is the that, that all of mainstream media lives for. This is their big moment. It is their Super Bowl, and they only get it four times once every four years. And they don't want Ralph and a lot of other barking dogs out there nipping at the heels of the big guys. It makes it messy. I was in Albuquerque, and the TV interview, and the, the guy asked me, he said, uh, uh, Dr. Common, are you? Uh, are you a serious candidate or are you just interested in the issues? <laughs> I still had to write the Washington Post and say, do you think you could cover the history-making aspects of our campaign at least? Because we still weren't getting uh, the, the kind of coverage uh, that we should have been getting. And the kind of coverage that we did get was all about the horse race. How are you going to affect Al Gore? The major multinational corporations who own the major networks aren't going to be sitting there publicizing that somebody was pushing for universal health care or corporate responsibility was left out of the debates. Without being on the presidential debates, you can campaign endlessly in 50 states for huge audiences. You won't reach 2% of the number of Americans that you could reach by being on one debate, which reaches anywhere from 40 to 70, in one case 90 million people in one night. It is extremely important to break into those debates. Uh, I, I've made the point over and over again that if Ralph Nader was allowed in the debate, it would absolutely throw the whole thing up for grabs because, first of all, it's a person who reads. I mean, after all, the public airways are a public good. We own them. The people in the United States own the public airways. Everything that you see on TV goes over these airways. And because of, because of that, there ought to be debates that allow alternate voices. And we were supposed to be in the debates, and we would have succeeded in creating a 5% party or 10% party if I could have gotten the debates. But they managed to keep us out of the debates. So here we have uh, a Kyber pass to the American people, controlled by the two parties, who have every interest to avoid any competition, to avoid any challenge, to avoid any alternative agenda, to avoid any excitement. Debates, as they're now constituted, are their platitudes, their, their poll-tested, poll-driven lines that the, that the spin doctors and the corporate consultants give and gave Bush and Gore in the year 2000. They're really not debates at all, actually. What they are, they're, they're corporate-controlled forums that are tightly controlled with the corporate-owned medium, with the corporate-owned media, and what goes out to people is just the sound bites that the two candidates want people to hear based on the polls that their spin doctors give them. The last thing they want is for the American people to see him for an hour and a half talking about issues and what the true solutions are. They fear it. They have a great fear of the truth being heard. And that's why the, the debates go down every year. The, the, the viewership of the debates. The viewership of the debates go down and down and down every quadrennial cycle. People watch less and less. And then, and then we expect uh, huge lines at the polls to vote for normally, in real governing terms, virtually indistinguishable candidacies that have deliberately become indistinguishable. And so we, we end up in this, in this bland Democrat-Republican two-party choice with a voter turnout of 50%. In 2000, we had 100 million people who didn't exercise their right to vote in the United States. You know, 50 percent of the country was not voting, and that was a steady decline for six decades. And we wonder why, when we are constantly conspiring in the major parties to keep it at 50 percent, because that's what we know how to manage. If we wanted more than 50 percent, we would not have the elections on a work day. We would not sh uh, close the polls in less than 24 hours. Uh, you know, we would have candidates of a very broad range of perspective, obviously including uh, what we call the extreme left in this country and the extreme right. If you're a socialist or a fascist or extremely opposed to immigration or extremely supportive of immigration or you care a lot about gun laws one way or the other, neither one of the parties exactly accommodates you. Their policies are close, but a bunch of other policies are not so close. It's a hodgepodge of stuff, and if you don't support that entire bundle, of stuff, you may be discouraged from showing up at all. What is the impact 
of having a system that continues to disenfranchise large parts of, of the public because of the way it's structured. The reason corporations have been able to take over the instruments of government so effectively from the regulatory agencies th right straight through to the Congress itself and the presidency uh, is that you can't form coalitions if you've only got two entities from which to draw.